Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm combining one of my favorite childhood meals, meatloaf and cabbage, into one. I call it smothered cabbage and ground beef. Let's go. All right, so here's just a quick shot of all the ingredients. The main stars obviously are the ground beef and the cabbage. And now it is time to just break that cabbage down. So I am going to remove about the outer two to three big old leaves on the cabbage. And then I'm just gonna slice it down the middle and then take my time gently and remove that core in the center. And you can make a V cut. It'll make it a lot easier to just kind of like cut that part out. And after that, it is just gonna be down to just chopping up this cabbage. And you can chop it however you want to. There's no rhyme or reason. I like to just do it this way, but however works for you, works for you. You are gonna be the one eating it, so who am I to tell you how to cut it? And it ain't really that deep, because it's gonna wilt down. So, once the cabbage is all nice and cut up, we're gonna start working on other veggies. So, I have a red pepper that I'm just gonna dice up roughly. And I'm also gonna do the exact same thing to a green pepper, as well as an onion. And as you know, this is the Holy Trinity, and I mean, these peppers and onion work for like any type of dish that you're making. You probably seen me use these peppers and, and onion combination so many different times, and that's because it's just so versatile, and you really just cannot go wrong. And plus, it always just smells like you're really doing something, even when you're really, really not. You just have some onions and peppers cooking. So now that our veggies are nice and chopped and prepped and all of that good stuff, we can start working on our ground beef. So I have about a pound and a half of ground beef that I'm putting into my Dutch oven and I'm just going to roughly kind of chop it up a little bit. But as you already know, when you're making ground beef, or at least a lot of times when I do ground beef, I like to drain out a lot of that liquid that kind of develops. You can leave some of it in there, but I like to drain out a lot of that because it's just extra liquid and fattiness and all of that that we don't really need. So after I do that and drain the meat and all of that good stuff, after about 10 minutes or so of cooking, this is what it's all looking like. And as you'll see, I'm just kind of like roughly chopping it up. And I, that's because I still want like bigger chunks or big chunks of the ground beef in the final dish. And so I don't really want to break it up too much. So this is about the consistency you want it. And you'll see they're like smaller pieces, bigger pieces, all that. So now I'm going in with a little bit of garlic powder. That's about a tablespoon of garlic powder. I'm going in with a little bit of pepper, about a teaspoon of that. I'm going in with a little bit of Cajun seasoning. Y'all know I love my Cajun seasoning. It's my all-purpose seasoning. And then I just mix that all up together. I also forgot to mention here, if you want to do it now, you can add in your tomato sauce and your tomato paste, but I didn't do it. You'll see me do it in a second. But now I'm just loading all of that cabbage in there very, very gently, and then I'm just going to place my lid on and let it cook on medium-high heat with no extra liquid or anything like that for about 20 minutes or so, and this is what you have. And it's looking pretty good already, if I must say so myself. If I had to stop here and just eat this, this honestly would be perfectly fine with me. The cabbage is all nice and wilted and getting tender and stuff. And it's a perfect dish right here already, y'all. It's already seasoned up nicely. It's good to go. But now I'm going in with my tomato paste and I'm going in with my tomato sauce that I mentioned just a couple seconds ago. And you don't really want too much tomato-iness in there, but just you want like the hint of that tomato flavor as well as the color that it gives you. And if you haven't noticed, this is kind of like my take on combining one of my favorite childhood dishes, meatloaf and cabbage. So we'll get more into it in a little bit, but now is the perfect time to add in all of those fresh veggies that we chopped and prepped earlier, and then just give it a quick stir. And now I'm going in with my last little touches of seasoning, some more of that garlic powder. And I'm also going in with a little bit of salt right here as well to flavor up the cabbage and the other veggies, and then a little bit of pepper. Again, give it a light little mix, and then we're gonna put the lid on and let it cook for about 25 to 30 minutes and your smothered cabbage will be done. So boom, y'all, this is what we have. This is the final dish and the final presentation. Y'all, like I said, this really reminds me of one of my favorite meals growing up meatloaf and cabbage and I, I know i've said it in my meatloaf video and in my cabbage video that i grew up eating those two together and so i was thinking one day like why not just combine them into one dish when you're eating it or when you're creating it because i, I already mix it all up together when i'm eating it anyway so i mean and there we go right there this is my meatloaf and cabbage that i love to eat but yeah y'all i mix it all the way up anyway so why not just 
cook it and create it all together. So that's what I did. Add a little bit of hot sauce and of course the obligatory ketchup. For me, you don't have to add that in there if you don't want to. <laughs> but I just love ketchup on my meatloaf. Anyway, yo, that is all I have for y'all today. Hope you enjoyed the video and all of that. You can hit the like button. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to. You can share this video. And you can continue watching all my other videos if you want to. <laughs> but yeah, y'all, that's all I have for y'all today. I will see you in the next video. Later.